The Reign of Caucasus is a 7th century focused mod, very historically accurate according to the mod creator, and you can download it by visiting the link in the description. So let us start a new game. You're not going to require anything for this, you're not going to require WSC or anything like that, you can just download the mod and straight away get into it, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So. As it says right here, the Caucasus is a land filled with nations numerous as the mountains themselves, fighting and struggling for survival and dominance, yet recently invaded by a mighty force, the Khazars. What fate awaits this beautiful yet complicated region and its people? Alright, so you can choose between a Caucasian or a nomad. Ha, I don't I don't really I don't really know the difference, because I am not very well versed in 7th century well, Caucasus history, I, I guess. So we'll just play Caucasian, I guess. I don't know. And then, well, we've got some pretty standard options right here. So I'm going to play as a warrior. I'm going to do street urchin. I'm going to do mm, university student. <laughs> it doesn't really make sense, but we're going to go for it. Personal revenge, and there you go. All right. So we're just going to call ourselves Barney because that's what I do in special features most of the time, unless I want to give them some kind of crazy, silly name. And, uh, yeah, then we're going to go with a little bit of... a uh, little bit of splitting with the uh, with the little, little uh, attributes right there. And we'll just go for Power Strike, basically, because what I'm going to aim to do, as far as I'm aware, this mod has a very small map, so it's going to be very intense, and the fighting is going to be vicious and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can maybe do something with that so I will obviously want to get pathfinding so let's go for three in pathfinding and we will go for I don't think I really want to use a bow but I might want to use a horse so I might want to get myself a little bit of extra riding skill and let's get one point in inventory management sounds like a good plan to me let's go for one-handed weapon proficiency just in case you never know and we'll go with this. There we go. That sounds like a good randomized character right there. So we can actually go to one of six different towns here. And I really don't know what I'm going to be choosing. So I I suppose we'll go... Should we go to Georgia? Let's go to Georgia. Why not? All right. So here is the map. Let us take a look at the map. As you can see, it is very small, as I've said. And that is just going to add to the overall intensity of the fighting in my opinion because once or you know once people start declaring war here and there let, let me actually just see am i actually at war against anyone in particular i would somewhat doubt it but you never know maybe maybe we would be no it doesn't seem like we are actually at war against anyone or at least my character is, is not having a negative relation with anyone at the moment so that's that's quite nice now as far as i'm aware there are there are unique troop trees as well. We're obviously going to find out exactly what's going on with that. I do, you know, I really want to join a tournament. I'm hoping that I might be able to make some good cash here. I could technically sell this book for a decent amount of cash. I actually have a walking stick and a broken arrow. Not entirely sure if that's going to be useful to me. So I'm just going to buy... I'm gonna I'm gonna sell this book and I'll buy a piece of uh, piece of bread. And technically, I could go into the tournament, but I don't know. Uh, I don't really know what the tournaments are like. So we're gonna see what's happening with that. I should mention, by the way, that this mod is early in development. It is a uh, an earlier version, and uh, as such, obviously, not everything is complete or anything like that. But let's go into have a look, see here, see if we can maybe. Maybe buy a better weapon for our 886 dinars. I am... Ooh. That's actually kind of nice, but it is a chipped military cleaver. I absolutely love the military cleavers in general. I think that they are fantastic weapons. So I might want to buy that. Let's buy that. Why not? And should I tell you a story? I'm going to tell you a story about military cleavers. Now, in my original playthrough of Warband Native, this was a long time ago, of course... But in my original playthrough, do I have a horse? Yes, I do. Ooh, fantastic. Okay, let's attack, let's attack these looters by ourselves. I think we can probably do it if we have a horse, which we do, of course. Anyway, as I was saying, in my original playthrough, I was well known for being extremely bad with, well, generally attacking everything. So, you know, if I was trying to attack from the right or trying to attack from the left or trying to do a thrust attack or whatever the case may be, I always had difficulties getting the right attack to come out just when I wanted to. So what I did was I basically just looked 
for weapons that would only have a slashing attack. And that is exactly what the military cleaver is. And that's exactly what I used for the majority of the series when I had actually discovered that. Because obviously then I would not be able to mistakenly, you know, thrust at the worst possible moment because, you know, that's obviously pretty bad. If you're in a... Whoa, that was a lot of damage. If you are in a very difficult situation and you decide oh let me th let me thrust when we're in close quarters combat no that's not gonna that's not gonna do you know that's not gonna do very well so yeah the military cleaver really saved my life on multiple occasions and that's why i have a bit of a soft spot for it otherwise there you go we actually gained a pretty sizable amount of cash including this which is very good. I like that shield a lot, actually. So I'm going to be taking that and using it indeed. Is there anything else here that I want to use? These gloves don't actually give me any armor or anything like that. And I am using a sturdy linen tunic, which is absolutely awful. But hopefully I'll be able to sell it for a decent profit. Oh, i got to say, this is actually a very small battlefield. As you can see, we've actually been uh, recruiting quite a bit. I went to the nearby villages. Unfortunately, my... Uh, my damage has not been healed yet because we have just been running around and uh, attempting to recruit these guys and we obviously do not have any medical skills to speak of so obviously that is kind of troublesome. Anyway, we have advanced to level 2 which is really nice and we will hopefully be able to get a whole bunch of our guys leveled up as well. I do need to check out the camp menu and the uh, reports menu as well to see if there is anything specific there that we may have missed and we'll take a look at that in a second. Ooh, some new boots! We might be in for a slight spot of bother here. We have traveled over a little bit east of our starting position, and I have now started to encounter forest bandits. Now, my guys do tend to have shields, but I don't know how... Uh, I don't know how much they really want to use them, so I suppose we'll, we'll see what's going to happen with them. We did level up a couple of our guys. Only four of them have advanced, I believe, into the next rank. I did check out the camp menu and the reports menu, but there isn't anything there to speak of that is uh, anything different from native or anything like that, so nothing really to worry about there. Otherwise, <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a big hit from that guy right there. Okay, so let's be a bit careful then, shall we? going to tell my forces to charge in now. And I will try, if at all possible, to try and uh, just kind of distract most of these enemies. And then we'll see what we can do about uh, maybe... Oh, no, we don't want to go close to those guys when they have an attack ready. That is going to be, well, kind of suicide for us. So, oh, we already lost one of our one of our bigger guys. Yeah, look at that. We lost one of our upgraded uh, upgraded footmen, which is actually kind of... A shame, but I guess, you know, specking into medic skills is probably a good idea. But I'm hopeful that we might be able to find a companion or something along those lines relatively soon. Now, my level up, I put it into strength and weapon master so that I can continue to be a uh, somewhat threatening presence on the battlefield. And we've gained another four renown and three morale, which is, I, I suppose, okay. Unfortunately, I do not have any prisoner management. I am going to have to do something about that, I suppose. But otherwise, we can continue onward. So... What we're going to do... Oh, 15 of these guys. Whoa, that's fantastic. Okay, that's really, really nice. So you can see here, we're leveling these guys up relatively easily, actually. I feel like the mod has a very good balance of how many bandits they have in a particular area. So, for example, here I've encountered looters, and I've also encountered Arab mercenaries. Now, Arab mercenaries are... Ooh, they're going to be kind of harsh, because I think they... Yeah, look at those guys. Yeah, they. there's 19 of them. And they have horses, as far as I can tell. So I'm actually going to go and try and attack these guys. Wow, they're moving so incredibly fast. 7.1 speed. So, mm, it seems like uh, <laughs> that is definitely not going to happen anytime soon. But I'm actually very intrigued about, as to how the mod is going to progress as people declare war against each other because obviously in the initial stages that's not going to happen so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to wait for some time and i mean i'm, I'm going to wait for a long time and we're going to see what actually transpires with each of the factions and then after that we're probably going to show a little bit of advanced gameplay in this special feature and uh, then we'll we'll you know 
have our closing thoughts and see, you know, exactly what we like about it, what we may not like about it, what we may need with it. You know, for example, does it have diplomacy? I don't know whether it has diplomacy, so we're going to find that out, obviously. I haven't died yet, so that's probably the reason. Anyway, I'm going to wait here for some time, and uh, I'll see you soon. All right, so a little update on what has actually been going on. It's been very interesting, actually. I've just been kind of sitting here watching the uh, the factions go to town on each other, really. And uh, bear in mind that my campaign AI is on normal, so basically it's it's on the highest that it can be. And as a result, the campaign AI, or the you know the AI that is utilized on the world map, is going to be much much more aggressive and uh, a little bit smarter as well than it would be if it was on a lower setting. But anyway, as you can see right here, we have Georgia doing some pretty crazy stuff by taking these fortresses over here. Now, here's the thing. They didn't actually take those outright. They didn't just go to these fortresses and take them themselves. The yellow faction came over here took these fortresses, and then Georgia came over and took them from the yellows. So that is just crazy. And it's also the same thing that happened with this fortress here, which is owned by the white faction down in the, uh, well, technically down in the southwest, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, so that there has been a lot of fighting in this area. Absolutely huge amounts of fighting. This obviously, oh, look at that. There we go. There's another siege going on there as well. And then, of course, we have this fortress right here. This fortress has been taken about... <laughs> I don't even know how many how many times. Maybe eight, nine times. So this is a massive area of fighting right there. And then this one was actually taken. It was actually taken by the yellows. But uh, unfortunately, they... Uh, well, they got pushed back. So, yeah, they are being uh, destroyed quite a bit. Georgia is doing pretty fantastically, actually. But the... Kazarians or Kazaria is doing the best because obviously they have the biggest faction at the moment. I have not done any recruiting of units because obviously if I'm waiting for some time I'm not going to be able to buy any food or anything like that or at least I don't really want to buy the food so obviously all of my units have basically left. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go to each of the factions. We're going to take a brief look at each of the highest tier of unit from every single faction and we're going to see which one is actually the strongest if there is one all right so let's start with the white faction right here so these guys have these elite skirmishers eventually now i'm, I'm gonna say i personally don't feel like these guys are that good but i obviously haven't faced them in battle or anything like that but they have 140 archery and they come with thrown weapons and they have 150 thrown thrown weapon proficiency as well. So maybe they maybe they come with other other weapons as well. Maybe they come with ar ar archery and thrown weapon, uh, you know, loadouts and things like that. So that might actually be okay. But I feel like they're very lightly armored. They probably are not going to be too efficient at staying alive. Then of course we have the cavalry ver variant for this faction. These guys, I'd not recommend. I would not recommend taking these guys either because they have very light armor once again. They're going to have a good amount of mobility because they do have 5 in riding skill, but that's basically it. I would recommend probably going for the Elite Axemen if you're going to go for them at all, and if you're even going to stay with one particular faction. Obviously, you could use a wide variety of different units in your army. So this is obviously an Elite Axeman right here. Very, very powerful indeed with its big two-handed axe right there. Good amount of HP and... I'd say much better armor than the standard units. Now, let's go on to the next one. So these are, I believe, the Georgian level ups. So you can see here that this is their infantry. This is a lieutenant. It is very standard. Not, not too good and not too bad. It's got 51 HP though. Very low HP for being an infantry. But it does come with a shield, so maybe it's going to stay a little bit... Stay, stay alive a little bit better. And then we have Iberian Bowman here. These guys, I'm not going to recommend them either. I feel like they are going to be very harsh to actually have work. And then, of course, we have the horsemen here. Now, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know whether this is actually from... Hmm, it, might be for, it might be from Georgia, but I'm, I'm not... N n yeah, maybe? Yeah, I think it might be from Georgia, actually, because uh, unfortunately, I could not go to the yellow faction 
to get any units because as you can see they are all looted all of the villages are looted so unfortunately we will we won't be able to take a look at the yellow factions units at the moment but anyway let's move on so that's georgia for you and then you have the kazarians now the kazarians i gotta say are probably the strongest i've seen so far maybe apart from the circassians you'll you'll see what i mean in just a second so look at these guys they come with really good armor they've got some really good armor right there they got nice helmets, they have 6 power strike, 6 iron flesh, decent proficiencies, amazing horse archery and riding skill, and well, that's it. They, they have a lot of really, really good things. And then of course we have the Kazarian Warlords right here. These are kind of tanky, really hard to kill archers. As you can see, they've got, they've got archery, they've got a massive shield, they've got 68 HP, which is just amazing. And, uh, well, I feel bad for anyone that wants to fight the Kazarians, which I think is probably most people, but anyway. Circassians, okay, so you can quite clearly see here that they're not very good. They only have 16 in wages, so you can imagine that their stats are not going to be amazing. They do come with a blunt weapon by the looks of things, so they might be good for taking prisoners if you order them to use melee weapons. They have 5 in power draw, pretty standard archery proficiency as well, 58 HP, but their armor is pretty awful. Now... This is where they are going to shine, the Circassians. These are their cavalry slash horse archers, and they are slightly worse at horse archery, but slightly better at mobility and defense than the Kazarians. So you can see here that they have, all, they have 68 HP, they have 4 in horse archery, whereas the other guys have 7, and then they have 7 in athletics and 6 in shield. So these guys are going to be good off their mounts and on their mounts and i think that these guys are probably going to be the ones that i would probably go for if you're wanting to have an all-around team basically a swadian knight of this mod i think they're pretty good because they can do range as well as melee and i think that's a, a pretty fantastic thing but they do have a very big wage so that's obviously going to be kind of harsh to deal with anyway we have the abkhazians here these guys I'm going to say uh, they're going to be hard to play with, uh, with the exception of the fact that they have so much athletics and they have a lot of HP, a lot of power strike. They're going to hit like trucks and they're going to move like Roadrunner. So it is, they're very, very good at that. They are kind of berserker type units. They're pirates. And then obviously you have the Boatswains. These guys are no. I mean, yeah, they have 10 in power, uh, power strike, 10 in iron flesh, and then 5 in power strike, power throw, and all that stuff. Their armor is leaving a lot to be desired, though, so even though they do have 70 HP, and 3 in shield might, might give them a little bit more survivability, but their main armor is going to be very fragile indeed, so it might be difficult to make those guys work. But anyway, that's the map. We're going to take a look at, uh, <laughs> I'm going to try and get into a battle with this absolutely hilarious mangled force of all kinds of different units. And uh, then we'll see what the uh, vassal battles are like and we'll also do a siege too. Alright, so here we are. We're actually in a battle against a vassal and I believe these are the uh, Abkhazians, I believe. I think we're, we're fighting against those guys because they generally have the least territory right now. So I thought to myself, okay, maybe it would be an idea for us to try and attack these guys and maybe, just maybe create our own faction because obviously in special features some of the time i do not get the opportunity to showcase the faction creation and uh, all that sort of thing so maybe uh, maybe i might be able to do that this time around ouch as my horse goes down so yeah these these guys we've seen these guys in our little troop Mm, troop preview sort of thing so obviously they are <laughs> we know we know what kind of troops they are capable of fielding as you can quite clearly see though they are not pushovers they are not pushovers by any means they they obviously hit extremely hard and well they have a lot of hp and everything thankfully i have so many cavalry i have literally just gone for kazarian and Circassian units. Those guys are just fantastic. I mean, if you really want to be dominant on the battlefield, it is a good idea to go for a bunch of cavalry. At least in this mod, it seems. Cavalry seems to be very, very good. Although, who knows? Maybe if I were to mass a huge critical amount of 
mm, maybe the big melee berserker kind of units from Abkhazia, they they might they might be pretty good, you know, they might be pretty good. Anyway, we did lose a little bit of uh, a couple of people there. Obviously, we were outnumbering them a pretty heavy amount, but that is to be expected, of course. Going to take this guy prisoner as well, and then we are going to take a couple of things here. So, yeah, I did give myself a couple of pieces of gear here. I, I'm using a heavy bar, Dish as a two-handed, and uh, reinforced elite armor, lordly war mask, reinforced iron greaves, scale gauntlets, and a heavy hunter horse, which, as you could see, went down almost immediately. So that was not very good. But, as you can see, they basically only have one town remaining. So I thought to myself you know what, let's do it, you know, let's do it, and let, let's see what we can do about it. Ah, hello, they seem to want to, they seem to want to fight us. <laughs> oh, I see. How did they, uh, how did they send in 971? I'm not entirely sure, but I suppose, uh, well, I suppose that's going to be, uh, that's going to be it for this special feature, because I don't think I'm going to be surviving this. I think this is definitely going to be one of those times when I will need to bring out my two-handed and I will need to solo the entirety of the enemy force, which is never going to happen. In a real situation, that would be pretty harsh. You know, 900 units? I, I don't even know where they came from, to be honest. So yeah, that is definitely something to look out for if you are going to try a siege. You definitely want to be a bit cautious of those units just coming out of nowhere. As you can see, these guys are literally not using the greatest of gear, but they're able to murder me. Nevertheless, let's see whether this has diplo- No, it does not have diplomacy. Obviously, this is a very early version of the mod, so it, it not having diplomacy, that's, you know, maybe it's going to be implemented at a later time. I think that would be pretty cool. So, yeah, we did actually manage to kill 47, which is pretty good. Alright, so by the looks of things, it is a very standard sort of siege layout, but as I've said, very early version of the mod, and you never know what can happen in the future of development. I hope that the development actually continues, because this mod has a lot of promise, and I personally feel like it could be very enjoyable if you play it, obviously, you know, normally, and you, uh, you're not doing a special feature like I am. But anyway, point is... As you can see, I feel like the units are actually... Wow, they're actually kind of dangerous. As you can see right there. That, they just murdered me. They just murdered me like no one's business. And I was really harsh on the Abkhazian units. So don't count them out just because they have bad armor. Don't count them out. Anyway... That will be it for this special feature. If you'd like to check out the mod, there is a link in the description. Show some support for the modding community if you would like to. And, uh, well... I think it's I think it's definitely worth a look if you are interested in this in this era of history and or the region in which it is set because I personally feel like it's uh, it's doing a very good job for being an early version as well. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.